star. Skin that contains and protects us, soothes and pleases us. Thousands of chemical reactions are intelligently orchestrated on our behalf in our bodies without our ever having to notice it. Self-repair, self-renewal keep us alive. Our hands, our feet, our eyes, all functioning well, all accumulated structure of success inherited from billions of years of evolution are here for our work and our pleasure. Throats to sing, arms to hold, minds that ring, hearts that can be bold. What a tragedy and an insult to define any part out, to say that some parts are bad and some parts are good. I preach against such destructive dualism. I thank and praise all of creation, or call it God if you will, for giving us these bodies exactly as they are, for deeper than shame is glory. I'm lucky. I've happened to had occasion to be with naked people and nudity more than most people get to do. You remember the streaking phenomenon? It was kind of funny when somebody ran through a sport event without any pants on. You've been to the sauna, perhaps, like I have, or the hot springs, where people, the norm is if you want to be naked, you can be naked. If you want to be clothed, you can be clothed. I'm fine with that. I'm glad I've had association out here on the West Coast, especially, I'm from Michigan, with hippies, whose phrase is, no body shame. And when they get naked together at the swim hole, the ones that are, quote, not attractive or too heavy or whatever it is, are all assured that there should be no body shame, for this is how we are. There's sort of a, a progression that we've undergone in my generation. I'm 64 now. And I can remember when you never saw any part of anything that had to do anything remotely with any of our parts sexual. I can remember when women had to wear like a canvas kind of a girdle. And it would strap them in so when they walked they had a certain appearance that when some of them started to take those girdles off and have their normal butt walking around, it looked kind of unusual and alarming. And people would get upset about it. I can remember in North Carolina when the police went into a darkened movie theater and hauled out a woman and arrested her and threw her in jail for what? For feeding her child with her breast. I can remember all this progression from this hiddenness to this radical ex uh, showing of everything. Think of the, uh, the nudie magazines that started out only showing certain parts and then gradually showed more and more. And finally, there's everything to see and then there's no more progression because that's what we are and that's what we look like. You get used to it after a while. The nice thing about being around naked people a lot is you find out that no one really looks that good. <laughs> <laughs> and no one looks that bad. We are as we are. Nudity, when you're in such a situation, transcends and eliminates the sexuality. It's no longer alluring, provocative. It's just who we are. Nudity relaxes us in our bodies, with ourselves and with each other. So I'm glad that I've had the opportunity to do that. But I grant that nudity is foreign to people. It's shamed. It's feared by many. So now let's get into Ashland's nude controversy. 